I'd rather do a bare knuckle match though. You know, I'm only going to get in the ring with someone I really want to damage. I'm not just going to get in there to have like, hey, let's have a little mesh. Or bell lifts like that. You know, if you're going to go in there, you're going to go in there to show that you can do damage so no one else opens the gob. And I know there's a handful of bell lifts out there. They've been screaming for years to try and get a bit of click off me having a scrap with them. And they're all just weird snar Charlie Snort and jailbirds. If they're not jailbirds, they're batterbirds. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you think I'm going to give any little nugget a platform? Because I can pull the traffic in. Imagine me having a bare knuckle scrap in Liverpool. Think about it. Imagine me having a bare knuckle scrap against Darren Hill. Can you imagine the traffic towards that? This is what I'm saying. I don't need to go out there and get in a, on a platform. If I am doing, I'm going to pick the victim. It's not an opponent. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm not sitting here thinking I'm this big ad, but the knobheads that's tried to terror me over the last five years, not one of them can give me a decent rap. And I'm talking about a scrap. I'm not talking about Queen's B Rules and all this that they want to portray like it's a good sport. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Anyway, let's switch the page. And that's that's just the bottom line. I don't I don't portray myself to be a boxer. I'm a scrapper. That's what I am. I'm not a fighter. I'm a scrapper. And I've been scrapping since in kid. It's what you do in a house with five brothers who are you fight for the best pair of trainees. Trust me, you're fighting over pillars. From an early age. And then you're fighting with men from 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, who were twisting you up and locking you in strip cells. So you've got to scrap. It's ingrained in you when you've been through the life I've been in. So I can have a scrap with people and I can be getting, but I can get back up and take another one and then another one. You know, it's a hospital job. You're not letting me get up with a black eye and a blood nose and go, you've got to damage me. That's what I'm saying to you, I'm a scrapper. I don't pretend to be some big boss hard fighter. I'm telling you, I can scrap. My scrapping is biting, plowing your eyes out, chomping on what I can, hating you. Your scrap and he's throwing three combos, bam, 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 bam. Dodging out of punches. Mine is latching on like a dog and not letting you go and using everything I've got to harm your body. I'm a scrapper. It's not a boxer, it's not a fighter. It's something completely different. No one knows how to handle a scrapper. Trust me. And you're always chat, oh, oh, you ran. What do you want to do, mate? Listen to the situation that people say, oh, yeah, but you ran from them. OK, well, let me tell you how I ran from them. And I've told this story. I don't. Re I shouldn't really be telling it again, but it is what it is. It needs telling again, because people are just throwing it everywhere again. And there's people that can confirm it. I won't mention the names. It's just a gang of little weird rats stealing scumbags off Breck Road, all right? And they've got a family that own a gym and they all think they're fighters and this and the crossfitters and all this. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And they were thinking they were mad. And they were terrorising nieces and nephews. He's aware of it, aren't you? So I had enough of that clique of knobheads. And the lamb was the leader of this clique of knobheads. And I've decided one morning to come out of my apartment and go and confront the them on Brecht Road. And that's exactly what I've done. I came out of my apartment, walked along Robson Street with nothing on me. Nothing. Walked right along Robson Street, along Walton Brecht, down Brecht Road. Outside the Betty, there was four mountain bikes. There was a car, a white T5 estate with four lads in it. All dickheads. Every single one of them was a knobhead. I've walked down, I've walked in the Betty. They're on the fruit machine. The kid that's looking at the door has noticed me and went and he couldn't open his mouth to warn the little rats that was on the fruit machine. 
I walked out. It took them a few minutes to recover. As I'm walking past the car, there's a kid on a bike. I've slapped him on the back of the head, called him a dickhead. Carried on walking down Brecht Road. Till still took them four or five minutes to get near me. I'm just walking. Next minute, you're hearing motocrosses. I turn round, you've got the car, you've got a mountain bike, you've got four rats on foot and a motocrosser chasing me down Brecht Road. They're pulling blades out. Don't forget I'm by myself, not a weapon on me. I'm stuck now in the junction. There's a junction on in the middle of Brecht Road where you can go towards Anfield's ground, towards Shield Road, or carry on going. I'm stuck in that junction. I'm running round cars with these rats trying to get me with the weapons. I see a door on a barber shop. I burst through the door on the barber shop and lock it behind me. What are they meant to do? Stand and get wasted or get off and fight another day. That's what I'm standing there with these rats with weapons looking to seriously get a name for themselves. That's what it was. And that's how I dealt with it. And whilst I'm behind the door, the little rats started running around with the blades outside, a video on it. Not doing no damage to the door, they could have weighed it in. Easy, weighed it in. Six or seven of them outside. What are they doing? Bouncing around outside. Oh, we've got that NG behind the door. They could have weighed it in. Easy. I'm stood there with a set of scissors off the barber. The barber's bailed into the kitchen and locked the door. I'm just sat there like that waiting with a pair of scissors, looking at the monitor, a six dickheads outside like a little gang rabbit. I'm just waiting like that with a pair of scissors. I've got a pair of scissors. <laughs> I can see you getting a bit heavy though outside, so I kicked the kitchen door in on the barber fella. <laughs> it's a big steel door, I'm out up a ladder and <laughs> end up by the wookie hollow. Well, it used to be called a wookie hollow. Behind there, like Brexide Park, is it? and then just went <laughs> See you later. Got back to mine and had a spliff. And then what happens? I'm sat in my apartment on Robson Street and someone will play up on a little crossing. <laughs> Outside that window, gang of helmets, one through my door. And I'll do it live on here, on my Instagram, in there, in that apartment in L5. It got to the point where they were trying to come through me door. They were setting on fire every time I went to go out. Shots coming at me. I had kids sitting in the bushes. <laughs> it was great. It was great, but you know what? The difficult part was not just going Rambo on the rats. Tip number three, follow up in the You know, it was like it was like a um, a pre-run of what could happen if I was armed. It would have been that simple. Walked right along there, down there, in the Betty. And what? That's how easy it is, honest to God. But obviously, I couldn't do that, could I? I was on license. Well, I weren't on license. I was on the at risk period. So if I was arrested and charged with any offence, they could reactivate the at risk period. And I would have only just finished my license. <laughs> so we had all my going on there, it was just crazy. So I never ran away. I got away. It's different, mate. You're not running, I weren't running away like I was running away calculated. Do you understand? When they were surrounding me around the cars, I weren't panicking, I was going, wah, wah. Some of them were like that. Do you understand? I had rats who were stuck in the traffic in the cars, going, yo, he's there, he's there, to the rats. I'm like that, having to run round the cars away where I'm hidden. Mad lad. It was good, though. It was exciting. And that's what I'm saying. I got away. And it's good to get away from danger. You know, you're, you're raised as a kid to be careful of dangerous stuff. Stay away from danger. You're raised like that, it's in your mind, it's got to be in your mind. So soon as I see my life is in danger, I'm not talking to cut down the face here. 
I'm talking being savaged by a couple of blades with rats just plunging. You know, it was safe gone. So the minute you see a dangerous situation opening up, don't think you're out of your bailer. Ignore what people say. You know how dangerous it is out there. You know, you've only got to stand your ground and you're dead. And that's the way it is. And men and lads these days with the drinking and they've got all this crazy pride, when in reality, you need to just go, you know what? I'm not really asked. I don't know yet. I'm not going to see you again in a bit. I'm not risking me life or prison for this, weirdo.